Okay, hello and uh, welcome everyone. Welcome to JFD Traders Tea Time with me, Dario Sonny Charles, because today is the 30th, 31st of March 2020. So, yep, welcome everyone. Welcome to this Tuesday's afternoon uh, recorded session where we're going to have a quick look at the markets, a few of the charts, um, the usual stuff. Uh, but before we do that, as always, let's quickly have a read through our risk disclaimer. So, the content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. As always, a few seconds for you to read the rest, and we can continue. Okay, so also just before we jump in, um, just a quick uh, reminder that uh, there won't be any uh, videos um, uh, tomorrow, um, so neither espresso nor tea time. So yep, catch my videos on Thursday. So yep, we'll start off with the uh, espresso video as always um, on Thursday, but for tomorrow uh, there's, uh, uh, yeah, there will be no videos. So just to kind of let you know, guys. Um, so. As always, before we jump into the charts, a uh, quick mentioning of our JVD YouTube channel, to which you can always subscribe to in order not to miss any of our upcoming videos. And of course, our JVD Bank website and specifically our JVD research page, which we update on a daily basis. So yep, feel free to visit us here on jvdbank.com and click on the research tab right there. So um, now then, um, as always, let's quickly refresh this page. Now this is this is um, an individual country, but um, yes, <clears throat> the overall figure, the overall number um, is well. There we go. We surpassed the eight hundred thousand number. So um, as I've mentioned this, uh, if, as I've mentioned on Monday. Uh, there is a good likelihood, well, to be honest, that if everything is uh, going to continue as it is right now with the same pace, then, yep, we will reach um, 1 million by the end of this week. So, again, uh, nothing to be proud of or happy about, but um, that's the current, kind of current day reality. Unfortunately, um, the, the, the virus continues to spread very quickly. So, um, although some states are man managing to control them, uh, control it, but, uh, yeah, in some other countries, it continues to rise drastically. So, um, now then jumping into a few charts. Um, so this morning I talked about German DAX <clears throat> and, uh, basically what I was talking about that the, uh, this downside line got violated and in a way we can actually get rid of it now and mainly focus on this little area of, um, of resistance around here near that, that psychological 10,000 zone. And of course this, uh, other key important area of support around the 9,140, 40, 41 zone that I keep talking about, uh, throughout this week. Um, in other words, we can see that the index is stuck in a range here. So we're keep we are still waiting for a clear breakthrough one of the sides of this little range uh, before we could consider further short-term directional move for now is it is just what it is um, we are like i said still hanging below this uh, psychological 10,000 zone um, this morning it did have an attempt to overcome it but as you can see quickly uh, the index quickly traveled back down uh, below this. So uh, in other words, yeah, guys, for now, you can see that uh, we are a bit of an, a uh, on a slight slide. Um, and uh, yep, let's keep an eye on this one. Maybe something can change here. But for now, for now, we are probably going to stay neutral and just continue observing this, the price action here. Um, now then jumping into another index and this is the S&P 500 so we're not open yet uh, we're waiting for uh, the open but if we look at the cash index right now we can see that the price is currently balancing around the 2600 zone so um, basically it's it's kind of in a way uh, it's still hugging this um, this downside line um, what I've mentioned yesterday, and I was covering this index yesterday, and basically what I was talking about that in order for us to aim for higher levels, we need to see a push above this 2,637 zone. And let me actually get rid of this uh, for now. We don't need it. We'll pick up on this later. But um, 
in order to consider some higher levels, at least in the short run, we would like to see a nice, good, strong push and ideally a daily close above this uh, 2,637 zone. And then we could aim for uh, slightly higher levels. However, as you can see right now, I mean, the cash index is currently at around 2,600 zones. So basically that's back uh, a little bit below this downside line, or I would actually even say bang on on the line. Um, however, what you need to keep an eye on, and this is what I talked about uh, previously, um, it's this upside support line, this uh, long term, uh, maybe a bit of a tentative one, but nevertheless an upside support line taken from the lowest point of uh, 2011. So as you can see, uh, the um, the index kind of traveled back above this territory, uh, back above this um, this upside line. But if we look at the daily chart quickly, if by any chance the index manages to uh, drift back down and close for somehow close below this uh, below this upside line today, then well, of course uh, the monthly candle would be below the um, below that upside line, and in a way further declines could be possible, especially going into April. For now, all eyes are on today's trading activity. We have the last trading day for uh, for the month so uh, let's see where the index is going to stay um <clears throat> in our in in a way like i said in order for us to get comfortable with lower levels um, yesterday i talked about this level here the 2454 zone um, and if we do get a nice good drop below this and a, a close below this then yes further declines could be possible for now um, this is um, like i said this is stuck here and uh, we are waiting for a clear break through one of our levels right here uh, gold so i've talked about gold uh, yesterday as well and uh, Basically, what I was talking about was that, um, in a way, if we see a drift below this uh, 1611 territory, then yes, we will aim for further declines. Now, ideally, what I was saying that as well, that we would like to see a daily close below this territory, below the 1611, then we could go for a bit of a deeper correction to the downside here, at least towards the 1575 zone or this upside support line taken from the low the 21st of May. Um, you can see that for now, yes, we did get a drop below the 16 11 but um, yep uh, the uh, the in the, uh, the the uh, the commodity is kind of still trying to remain above this 16 uh, 16 11 zone because as you can see we did get these breaks previously but neither of these daily candles was able to close below this so now the big question here is can we see today's candle closing below the surgery if we can then yep, we will aim for a bit of downside here. Uh, not much. We will initially initially target this uh, 1575 zone um, or this upside support line. Uh, for us to let's say start considering the downside, at least uh, or say deeper uh, extensions to the downside. Well, we would like to see a, a drop below the 1547 uh, zone, roughly around here. That's not far from the low of uh, f uh, the 5th of February or actually in other words the lowest point of february so yep uh keep your eyes on this one this would be our level for uh for the downside let me just quickly mark that uh for our future reference um again captured the arrow i don't need that one um but i need this this highlighted area right here. So basically that's going to be our downside scenario from which we could consider the downside scenario. So yep, uh, keep your eyes on this one guys. For now, um, all eyes are going to be on the 1611 zone and how uh, today it will close in regards to this line. So and I mean how, how the gold is going to close in regards to this line. So yep, keep your eyes on this one for now. Um, Ripple, uh, here the situation is um, a little bit tricky, I would say. Um, still, we're kind of hanging around here. And actually, let me just jump into a four hour chart because what I want to see here, and I want to see if this is going to work out or not. Uh, basically, we do have this uh, kind of tentative upside support line. Um, so, taken from the low of the 16th of March. Um, and in a way, as you can see, the, um, the crypto is kind of balancing um, above this upside line. And oh, or even actually we could drag it from here. That's the low of the 16th of March. So there we go. That's a little bit more accurate. Um, <clears throat> so 
In other words as well, you can see that the uh, 0.1760 level, I spoke about this level previously, and if I show you the daily chart again, that's basically the lowest point of uh, December 2019, or even actually the lowest point of, the, of 2019 in general. Um, you can see that the the crypto is struggling to overcome this barrier, so that's why we need to see, wait for a nice good pop above this and uh, maybe ideally we would prefer to see maybe a nice daily close above this level as well because for now it seems that the uh, the crypto is struggling to do so um, we're waiting for we're not doing anything yet here we're waiting for a clear breakthrough either uh, this level uh, the 0 0.1760 or in terms of the downside now uh, for this one let me just jump back into a four hour chart previously I spoke about this level here the 0 0.1450 but we have moved already more to the right so in a way our target uh, could be and let me just quickly uh, this one right here, this is going to be that, that little level uh, which we're going to consider after a break, after a break of which uh, we could see maybe a bit of downside. For now, um, you can see that the crypto is kind of uh, hanging around here still. Uh, so, yep, uh, for now we're, we need, we're waiting, we're, we will remain neutral and we're waiting for a clear break through one of these highlighted areas before considering a further directional move. So, um, the this level here is by the way around the 0 0.16 uh, 0 0.1620 zone so keep your eyes on that one um, NZDJPY quick mentioning of this I, uh, this morning I talked about this one and I've showed you the month uh, the one hour chart um, and uh, basically what I was saying that um, given that the pair failed to um, to break um, above this key barrier here, the 65.46 zone. The pair then drifted back down, um, drifted lower, tested this downside line from underneath again, and then sold off. So this is basically what I was talking about this morning, um, to remain careful and cautious. Um, as you can see also, it drifted below this upside line, but failed to break and, uh, well, should I say, failed to stay below this other level that I've mentioned as well, the one, the, the breakout point for the downside, which is around this 64.46 zone. So although we did get uh, some breaks here, some false breakouts, you can see that neither even of the one hour, char one hour candles uh, managed to close below this. So in a way, first of all, what we're going to do here is we're going to get rid of these two lines because now the main focus falls on the um, on these two levels, on the 64.46 on the downside and the 65.46 on the upside. So yep, uh, for now guys, <clears throat> Keep your eyes on this, on these two, um, and uh, yep, we need that confirmation break and ideally a close. Um, now, previously I, I talked about a four-hour uh, candle. Of course, that would be nice to see as well, but uh, in this situation, because everything is so tight, we will start considering a, um, a further directional move if we already get a nice one-hour candle close here, either below the 64.46 or above the 65.46 zone. So keep your eyes on this, guys. Very interesting developments here, and uh, we may squeeze something out of this one. Uh, USDJPY. So uh, here, let me just jump back into a four-hour chart. Um, you can see that after, uh, this is what I talked about when I last covered uh, USDJPY. Now, now what I was saying that if we see a drop below the 108.58 uh, zone, then yes, we will aim for further declines. We will aim initially for the um, the 107.74, 75 zone, uh, and then we will aim for that 106.82.83 territory. However, you can see that uh, the pair drifted a little bit closer to this area, th this our, our target of ours, uh, but it kind of reversed earlier and now drifted back up and is now currently getting a hold up near the same breakout level, which previously was seen as a breakout level. Now it's seen as a nice area of resistance. So in other words, uh, how we could play this game right now in order to be on the safe side, uh, we will look at this here. Now uh, we will keep an eye on, of course, on this level here, the 108.58. If we do get a nice four hour candle close above this, then yep, maybe we could consider some higher levels. However, 
given the difficulty of the situation here uh, right now, uh, what we're going to do here is we're just going to probably wait for a, a, a higher high or a, uh, a lower low. Now, uh, in this situation here, if if we do get a push higher and if we do get a push above the 109.64 zone here, which is the low of the uh, 23rd of March, now this is when we will aim for, for further upside. Uh, but if it struggles to overcome this uh, 108.58 zone and starts reversing lower, we will only target a downside if we get a break below this little territory right here between the 106.82 and the 107.10 zones. Now the 107.10 is the uh, the low of this week, the current low of this week. Um, and uh, this level here, the 106.82 is seen as a good area of, was seen as a good area of support here back on the on, uh, around 3rd of March and also on the 18th of March. So uh, that's why this is this one is just for that extra confirmation. Uh, but like as I said, we will start looking at uh, lower levels if we get a drop below the 107.10 zone straight away. So yep, keep your eyes on this one, guys. Could be quite interesting. But again, we'd rather be safe than sorry. I do understand that we're we, this is a huge area to be missing out uh, on. But it's if until it kind of moves in this all this area it's not really uh let's say let's put it that way there's not much we can do um but yeah uh, as i said this these are the two levels for us to get a little bit more comfortable with a further directional move uh, usd cad this morning i talked about this potential move higher because we were uh, we've managed to break above the uh 1.4162 zone and stay above it so that's what exactly is happening right now so we are seeing that the pair is moving further north um now we will be targeting this downside line taken from the high of the 19th of, of march um however don't forget that as long as it remains intact we could see another round of selling so something like this could be possible um but if this downside line breaks and we see uh the the rate pushing above the 1.4325 zone here uh, then yep we will aim for uh, for for higher levels for now um, although we could we are seeing a bit of a, a, a move higher still this scene is a temporary correction before another leg of selling because uh, we are still below this downside line and if the downside line remains intact we could see another round of selling here guys uh, GBP USD so uh, this morning uh, I I spoke about this one and I was telling you guys to keep a close eye on this and uh, basically we could see a bit of a drift lower so we got a drift lower uh, the pair remained above the 1.2195 zone so to be honest looking at this activity right now it most likely we will stay above this 1.1950 zone today and if we do, then we'll have a monthly candle here closing, um, uh, closing. Basically, the monthly candle will will close above this highlighted territory, this key important territory. That's basically the 1.1950 is the lowest point of 2016. Um, but don't get me wrong. Uh, in the beginning of the month uh, of April, we could see maybe a bit of a decline here, maybe even going back all the way here towards the 1.1950. But if this territory continues to hold this is where the bulls could step in and drive this one higher but that's again that's in the scenario if we see a drift lower and if we see a, a break below the 1.2195 zone if we don't see that if this area holds because this is a very good area of support um, then we could see a nice reversal and a push higher for those who are more on the cautious side you could just wait for a break above the 1.2485 zone and then target higher levels because this would confirm a forthcoming higher high and uh, yep we could then aim for the uh, 1.2 726 or even going further for the uh, for this downside line taken from the high the 13th of December and finally uh, euro USD so um, now this is what I talked about this morning and uh, basically um, I was telling you guys to keep a close eye not only on this upside support line but on this uh, level right here the 1.09 uh, 1.0952 zone roughly around there so as you can see looking at this four hour chart uh, we managed to get a drop below this initially but uh, the bulls kind of really quickly pushed the pair back above it now um, 
as long, if if this pair remains here in this territory, um, we will remain neutral because for us to get excited about with higher levels, well, we would need to see initially at least a push back above the 1.1087 zone, and then yep, we will aim for higher levels. But ideally, we would prefer to maybe to see a push above this barrier because uh, this this is the high um, the high of the 29th of March, and, uh, and that's roughly around the 1.1144. Uh, if we do get a push above this, then yep, this would confirm a forthcoming higher high, and uh, well, uh, higher levels could be met because more buyers could see this. This is an opportunity uh, to kind of to jump in and drive this one high to further north. Um, but however, and, and because we're kind of far away from there right now, unless something drastic happens in the market that manages, <coughs> excuse me, to push, uh, to push the pair higher here. Uh, we can see that the, the the rate is closer to this key important support zone. So if we see at least a four hour candle closing below this territory, then yes, slowly gr uh, we will continue grinding to the downside. Um, the next level for us to consider w could be the 1.0888. But if that fails to withhold, then yep, the next target for us is the 1.0777, which is the lowest point of February this year. So keep your eyes on this one, guys. Uh, for now, it could be quite interesting, uh, but uh, like I said, we need that confirmation close at least of a four hour candle below this territory, below this 1.0952, and then, yep, we could aim for further declines again. For now, uh, we will remain a little bit on the neutral side, and uh, yep, uh, we will continue observing this one. Most likely, we will just not do anything and uh, well we'll just continue and we want to see how this monthly candle and where this monthly candle will close so okay guys um, I hope you found it useful um, thank you very much really appreciate all your likes all your views guys and uh, yep as I said uh, there won't be any videos tomorrow but we'll resume on Thursday so yep catch my uh, espresso video uh, around well a little bit after six six o'clock uh, GMT time uh, and uh, yep we'll we'll review everything what happened uh, on Wednesday and uh, yep we'll, we'll see what to, how to prepare for Thursday again um, but yep I hope you have a fantastic evening guys I hope you uh, have a good trading session session today if you're still trading and tomorrow um, but again stay safe uh, don't over trade and uh, well uh, manage your risk accordingly um, but the most important um, stay safe in terms of health wise anyway guys have a wonderful evening and I'll see you later bye bye